everyone, welcome back to Alice in the Giant Bookshelf. Today's video is a review of Agatha Christie's Poirot, The Greatest Detective in the World by Mark Aldridge. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name's Alice and I have way too many books and today we're going to be talking about one particular book that I have read for non-fiction November and that is this one. Agatha Christie's Poirot, The Greatest Detective in the World by Mark Aldridge. And now I think this is my first ever review of a non-fiction book, which is not really surprising when you consider how little non-fiction I've actually read this year. But it is surprising when you consider that last year my two favourite books of the whole year were non-fiction. But yes, this is my first non-fiction of the year that I have enjoyed so much I wanted to do a review. Now if you've been to my channel before you will know that I am a huge fan of Agatha Christie and a huge fan of Poirot in particular. He has always been my favourite detective from Agatha Christie. As you can see we've got Poirot in the background today just to set the scene. As always with my reviews I will be talking about what the book is about without spoilers, what I really like about this book, if there's anything I don't like I'll talk about that and then at the end I will recommend you other books that I think you will like if you like this book. So this one was first published in 2020 but there is a section in the back about the a Poirot film from 2022, Death on the Nile, so I do think that it may have been updated for this paperback edition. I first acquired this book last month when my mum bought it for me and I am quite sorry that I hadn't actually read it before because it is brilliant. Love this book so much. What Mark Aldridge has done here is provide an account of everything Poirot and he does it in chronological order and sort of mixes in details from Christie's life. Other books are mentioned but it predominantly focuses on the fictional detective Poirot. Yes this book was divided up into chapters and each chapter took on a decade. So we had the 1920s when Poirot first appeared, the 1930s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, 70s, then we had a chapter on the 80s and 90s and 2000 and beyond. So I thought it was really, really well laid out is my first point. And within each chapter, it broke down into each of the main books. And if there were adaptations, it also did like a part of a chapter about the adaptations. So what was really interesting for me in this book, and I did, I have read books a bit like this before, books that um, sort of break down Christie's work and I actually did learn about some things that I didn't know about before so considering the amount of Christie related books I have read that is pretty impressive. Coming on to things that I really really like about Poirot, the greatest detective in the world. I really really liked the organisation as I've just said but I also really really liked the fact that for each chapter Mark Aldridge first of all introduced the decade and talked about kind of what Agatha Christie was doing in that decade and just a little introduction to that time in her life and then for each book he talks about the book, talks about the writing uh, of the book, sort of descriptions and he also talks about like the critical reception and it was really interesting to read kind of reviews from the time, what people thought when the books first came out and sometimes how the critics opinions changed over time or changed with the public opinion. And it was also really interesting to me that a lot of the books that the critics thought were not Agatha Christie's best, the public still absolutely lapped them up and loved them. So that was really interesting to see. And I really, really did enjoy how well this was done. There were also pictures of book covers, pictures of different actors for the adaptations part. And it, it was just really, really enjoyable, really, really readable. Another thing that I really, really liked about this book was the lack of spoilers. Let me start by saying that any book that talks about Agatha Christie will obviously have to come up with a way to deal with spoilers because it's absolutely essential if you are a first-time reader of 
Christy, to my mind at least, to avoid spoilers. I know some people watch adaptations before, but that's something that I could not do because I like to have the surprise. I have now read all of the Agatha Christie books, so I wasn't as worried about spoilers, but in the interest of reviewing this for other people, and also in the interest of protecting books that I may have forgotten, because on my rereads of Agatha Christie so far, some of the books, I've forgotten who the murderer is, I've forgotten who done it, how done it, you name it. Sometimes I only remember the premise. And for rereading, it would be best for me if those things stay forgotten because it's like reading Agatha Christie for the first time over again, if you get really lucky. Obviously, some of the really famous books, I it's impossible not to remember the denouements, the uh, big moments. How does this one deal with spoilers? I was going to say that one of my favourite books about Christie is Agatha Christie's Secret Notebooks and its follow-up Murder in the Making by John Curran. And in these books, he looks at Agatha Christie's notebooks and discusses, obviously, plot details. It was essential for that book to have spoilers. And the way John Curran dealt with it was to put at the start of each chapter which books would be spoilers. And when I was reading that, I actually had to stop reading it and read more Agatha Christie before I could go on with it. And I think I ended up reading it after I'd read all her books in the end, or after I'd read the vast majority. So there's that approach to spoilers. The approach to spoilers in Mark Aldridge's book I thought was really, really well done. He states in the introduction that there won't be spoilers in the main body of the text, but that there may be spoilers in the end notes. Oh, and he also says that if there is a spoiler in the end note, it will be signposted. Going into this, I didn't want to get spoilers of a lot of the different Poirot books. There were certain ones that I didn't mind if I read a spoiler, such as Murder on the Orient Express. I already have reread that. Testing this out for people who definitely didn't want spoilers, I thought this was done really, really well. I actually think that if you do not want spoilers at all for any of the Poirot books, you could just not read the end notes of this book, because to be honest, most of the end notes are things like sort of signposting where that piece of information has come from. So a lot of the information on Agatha Christie herself and what she thought of the book would come from letters that she wrote to her publishers and things like that. So a lot of the end notes are just things like Agatha Christie to uh, WC, I can't remember who that was exactly, and the date. So I do think you could read this book without reading the end notes. A couple of times I was reading the end notes and I got to one that said at the start of it, possible spoiler. So I just didn't read that, that, that bit if I didn't want the spoiler. So I thought that Mark Aldridge had come up with a good way to deal with spoilers. Just be really, really mindful and careful if you're reading the end notes and you're reading an end note for a book you do not want a spoiler for. Try not to let your eyes scan ahead in case it's a spoiler at the start of the end note. The other thing I really liked, I have just mentioned as well, was that it felt like there was a lot of Agatha Christie's own input in this book like little anecdotes like whether she got annoyed about what the cover looked like or like what she thought of certain characters she'd invented or if she'd given a rare interview and any of the books had got mentioned it was sort of incorporated into that book. I also really liked that this carried on after Agatha Christie's death and it, it just followed Poirot. It followed Poirot really closely. There would be mentions of other Agatha Christie books from time to time, sort of setting in context how few Poirot books there were in some eras. I just thought this was a wonderful book. I thought it was really really well laid out and if you want to read sort of a full fullish account of the Poirot books, what Agatha Christie thought about them, what the press thought about them, how they were received by the public at the time and how Poirot's legacy has gone really, I would highly highly recommend this book. Was there anything I didn't really like about this book? Not really, to be honest. I don't think you would like this book if you're not interested in Hercule Poirot at all. And I don't think you would probably appreciate this book if you haven't read at least a sizable chunk of the Poirot novels. So 
I wouldn't say this was a place to start with Poirot. If you've read more than a handful of Poirot books, I think you will really, really enjoy this. I just had a really, really good time this non-fiction November with this particular non-fiction book, and I would recommend it highly to Agatha Christie fans and Poirot fans in particular. If you have already picked up this book and you've liked it, some further recommendations for you. So I've already mentioned Agatha Christie's Secret Notebooks by John Coran. This also contains two unpublished Poirot short stories and it is also referenced several times in Poirot, the greatest detective in the world. For further reading, you couldn't go far wrong than look at this. This does, however, deal with all of Agatha Christie's books potentially. And as I've said, the way this one deals with spoilers is to tell you at the start of a chapter whether there will be spoilers of anything. So for example, there's a chapter called The Nursery Rhyme Murders, and it tells you solutions revealed, Crooked House, Five Little Pigs, and a list of all the short stories and things that could be spoiled in that chapter. So this is one that I would definitely recommend for people who have read either the vast majority of the Agatha Christie books or are prepared to stop and start this book while you read others or you don't mind about spoilers. The second book that I would recommend if you really enjoyed Poirot, The Greatest Detective in the World, is an older one, The Life and Crimes of Agatha Christie by Charles Osborne. Um, what this book does is essentially the same sort of thing as Poirot, The Greatest Detective in the World, because it talks through each of the novels and in chronological order of when they came out, and also the short stories as well are mixed in. I felt there was more in Poirot, the greatest detective in the world, about the reception to the book. Recommend this one if you are like a real Christie completist or you want to have a book about all her books and maybe read it as you go along with reading Agatha Christie. It's kind of a good guidebook but maybe one to dip in and out of more than read all the way through. The final book that I would also recommend if you liked Poirot or you want to read something similar is David Suchet's Poirot and Me. Uh, obviously this one deals more with David Suchet and adaptations. So for many people David Suchet will be the definitive Poirot and for me he embodies how I imagine Poirot um, in my head. <laughs> this is uh, David Suchet's memoir so there is stuff not about Poirot but a lot of it is obviously centred around Poirot and how he played Poirot for so many years. There is a bit of stuff about this in this one. Obviously if you want more detail on the adaptations and on how David Suchet approached playing Poirot and it's sort of behind the scenes a bit I would highly recommend David Suchet's memoir, Poirot and Me. So that brings us to the end of my review today. If you are an Agatha Christie fan and a Poirot fan, I hope you will enjoy picking up Poirot, the greatest detective in the world at some point. And I hope I've given you a flavor of what to expect if you do. So thanks for watching today. If you have liked this video, please do give it a like. Please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. I do have lots of other Agatha Christie content on my channel and you can find that in my Agatha Christie playlist. So do check that out if you're a Christie fan. Please do leave me a comment down below. Do you love Poirot? Do you have a favourite Poirot book? And will you be reading or have you read this book? I'd love to hear from you. And I do hope you will all join me again soon for another video all about books here on Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Bye for now. <laughs>